Hello and welcome to Uncle Grouchy's Neighborhood. Um, Uncle Cedric, if you're out there, bite me. So I want to start a small project here to make an arbor. You see up on the screen I've got a, an arbor using a cup style grinding wheel. And for those of you who have done this kind of grinding, you know that by the time you get across the part, enough of the grinding wheel is worn away that you're not going to get a flat surface unless you're really, really skimming it. So while this has its place, I'd like to expand my capabilities. I'm going to make another arbor to use with 6 inch uh, benchtop grinder wheels. I have a bunch of those and the, the arbor is going to do two things. It's going to allow me to grind in a, a side position and I'll just have to put things on an angle plate on the table so I can get some semi precision grinding for a thing I have to do with one of my chucks. And I can also just turn it sideways, stick it in a lathe, and use that uh, with a diamond point to shape and uh, true up my wheels. So that is the plan. And this part of the series of the videos is going to be laying out the design. Since it's really hot outside and I don't want to play in the shop, I'm going to sit in the air conditioning and bore you to death playing in CAD. Instead of my usual drawing program like Corel or something like that, I'm going to play in CAD today. Uh, we're going to use Autodesk Inventor, and for those of you who are dying to suggest Fusion 360, just don't. Uh, I don't like clouds, I don't like having my parts and software at the mercy of an internet connection or a third party server, and I don't want to have to go all through all the hassle of trying to make it work offline. This works offline, and that's the way I like it. So, I'm going to start off with a project, because um, we want to keep all our parts in one place. So let's grab a project, hit new, new single user, that's fine. And we're going to call this uh, grinding arbor, I guess. Uh, yes. Um, is that about right? Good enough. We'll finish that, let it create the directory. And we're done. That can go away. Now we've got our grinding arbor project. It's selected and ready to go. And let's make a part. I'm currently set for imperial measurements uh, so those of you who like metric well that's just fine and dandy I'm not gonna do it not today our materials to work with we've got some half inch rod I've got two and a half inch aluminum and a nut and that's basically what we we'll to start with so let's work with the aluminum first because the the size of that's gonna dictate the length of our shaft start a sketch I'm gonna grab the XY or YZ plane right here just just because it's here And since we're working with a circular piece, we're going to grab a circle. Our stock is approximately two and a half inches, so that'll be 2.5. And that's that. And we're going to finish that right now. Sketch is finished. I want to make a hub, let's say three quarters of an inch, just to see how that comes out. So I'm going to go to my 3D model, and I'm going to extrude. One inch is too big. Let's go 0 0.75. Does that look groovy? That looks groovy. So there's a chunk of aluminum. It looks aluminum-ish, I guess. I guess we could go over here to uh, our material library. Let's see what we got for aluminum. We're going to be playing with cast. It's old crappy aluminum I have lying around. I don't know what class it would be so let's just call it aluminum it got brighter well that's a big help okay so now I want to shape this uh, to do its hubbly thing so I want to throw a hole in there because we're gonna have it press fit onto the shaft so we're gonna throw a hole in there so on that face the hole is going to be a press fit, so let's say 0.493 maybe. I'll machine it to 92, and that'll give me um, room to sand it and fit it. Because I'm really crappy about coming up to size on a small diameter. Uh, my machine just seems to just grab and, and do things on its own. So if I get to there, I'll be happy, and I can polish it or uh, sand it from there. It's, it's subject to change. We're in a design phase. Who cares? Let's just say, yeah, oh, we got to tell it to, uh, where do we want it on the face of this doohickey? We want to, we're already ready to go for a reference. We're going to take the circular reference right there. That's going to throw it right in the middle, and we'll just say, okay. Now I got a hole. Ooh, that's a start. Now I want to dish this out because I only want it gripping the grinding wheel along the outside edge. 
and I may have an extended hub on the wheel so I want to get rid of some of that material no problem let's just do another sketch right off of that one and we'll take our uh, we'll take a circle and we'll just make that two inches groovy and I'm going to extrude that but we're gonna go backwards we're gonna say go in that direction and we're gonna say cut the material out I hope you're following along I'm going fast and it only needs to be one eighth of an inch or so so I don't know the uh, decimal but we can do one slash eight there we got ourselves a nice a little pocket um, we got some sharp edges let's put a little fillet on the edges that is probably too much and we don't want to fillet no 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 we want a chamfer want a chamfer right there that's kind of big though let's just say point zero we're just gonna break the edge that's fine and we'll grab that one too and we'll grab that one so those edges are broken and we'll grab that one too I'm gonna work a little bit on the back side so we'll say good and we got our piece with broken edges now this I need a way to grab the shaft um, with a wrench or something so I'm not working the gear train on the machine I wanna I could throw a couple of radial holes in here and stick a peg in there uh, but I always have the collet wrench right there at the lathe so why not um, make this to fit a collet wrench because why do something simple when you have the means to make it hideously complicated no problemo let's throw a fillet on there or a chamfer I want this edge yeah that looks fine quarter of an inch chamfer groovy so let's uh, let's start another sketch we'll come off of this face take a circle so my collet nut is 2.47 so let's throw one of those in there let's throw a circle at 2.47 and that is of course just a little bit smaller than my 2.5 but that's rough anyway that could easily get cleaned up that much but this is what we're working with so we got 2.47 uh, I want a notch I want several notches so let's go to our rectangle and I'm choosing the uh, two point center just because it's it stays centered and it's easy enough to work with so I'm gonna throw it right here and I'm gonna bring that out the notch is uh, 0.25 wide so we can do that tab over it's about an eighth of an inch so again we can use 0.25 because we're gonna have half and half above the circle so 0.25 that's one we're gonna do a circular pattern of this box and I want this to be my rotation point so we hit that there's our axis there's our notches looks good now we got six of those I want to throw another circle in there to make a face for the uh, cut operation so we'll just smack it like that and we'll say good so now this is going to be a cut operation so I'm going to do extrude and you can do it here or here we're going to make this a cut that sends the direction backwards that's fine and about a half an inch or so as it says cut that one there we go that one that one that one that one get that top one and I'll make sure to get the bottom one that look about right there that is just dandy so I'm gonna save that part off now let's give it a look of something just to make it a different color
Yeah, orange is fine. And that is going to be the inner hub. <coughs> Excuse me. And that's groovy. <laughs> 